Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining this next episode of the DIFF podcast. Today, I have the pleasure of interviewing Rachel Nevers, who is managing React documentation uh, on the Meta team. Well, it's great to be talking with you today, Dimitri. Um, how did I end up working with the React team at Meta? Well, it's a long story, but I was I was curious to learn more about React. I actually didn't know anything about React. Well, short of it was the most popular UI library on the on the JavaScript market before I joined uh, before I joined the team. I joined specifically because I love teaching people. And I wanted to take this opportunity to learn something amazing and teach an entire community. And I thought it was a, an awesome opportunity to be a part of that learning journey for so many people. I know that you started with React Native initially. Uh, can you speak to that experience a little bit? I came in and I had to figure out what needed doing. And it was interesting because oftentimes the thing that you think will solve the problem or make things better isn't the thing that people actually want. I did a little bit of user interviewing uh, from back in my day as a, a user experience designer. I was used to going out and talking to people. So I reached out to the React Native community because I'm new to this community. And I was surprised to find out that React Native, the community is full of mobile developers and learned a lot of interesting things from just going out, asking questions and figuring out um, a couple of hypothesis. Like, for instance, how many people are coming here who don't have a background on the web? This is something like 75% of the people who use the React Native documentation site, they come in from a strictly mobile background. So this is their first tango when it comes to React and JavaScript. And the documentation was totally not written for people who are unfamiliar to this territory. So the first step wasn't actually to spend time on the high traffic pages. This actually just changed the language. I made a little onboarding series of docs that explain what React is. Here's the fundamentals. And, you know, trying to make that a less, a less abrupt learning curve. And I also had to install quite a bit of metrics to make sure that I could conclusively show that the efforts we were putting in were paying off. Can you talk about that and maybe some metrics that was involved? So one of the first things that I did was I installed um, thumbs up and thumbs down page ranking on every page. These little metrics that I installed in the first place, they revealed a, a rather low and sad overall approval rating, like 50 something percent of people who clicked a thumbs up or thumbs down clicked the thumbs down. But then after the push majorly lifted that score from the 50s, uh, bumped it up to like 88%. This was really good for figuring out where the baseline needed to be and getting there. So it's great that you've been ahead of the curve, really, and just seeing that this is what people really want. This is what helps them to grow. It's easy to be ahead of the curve when you, you know, you talk to your community members and your users. What really matters is that you go out there and you form that connection with real people using what you're building and really understand what they need and what they're, they're looking for. You won't know what people need or what their problems are unless you talk to them first. True, it's not an open source if it's not really open uh, to the members of the community that can contribute. Can you talk a bit about what you're currently involved in? And I'm excited to hear about the community aspect of working with React too. I get a, a really interesting bird's eye view of all of the communities that surround the React platform as it were. React didn't really have any, you know, developer advocates or, you know, marketing budget. It completely sprang forth uh, from a, a, a little Skunk Works project at Meta. And then the community got hold of it and ran with it. And that goes out to, you know, people teaching React. It's the React community that has spurred React uh, on, on this long and and amazing trip to where it is today. When it comes to learning React, I know that you've been involved with this relaunch, or like launch of a new documentation site for React uh, that I feel like focused on learning as the very first thing that people start with. Can you talk about that a little bit? It's in beta still because we haven't completely finished the API documentation and there's just a little bit more guides to write 
But this is an entirely reworked version of the documentation. Everything that was locked inside the heads of, you know, Sebastian Marc Bouge and Andrew Clark, and work to translate this into a fully interactive learning path and curriculum for anyone who wants to go from you know, good to great with React. It's really cool. And yes, if you think some of that artwork looks familiar, I did draw the illustrations. Can you actually tell us a little bit about that too, about your, uh, I wouldn't even say hobby, you were like way beyond professional level for me. Back in the day, I used to be an award-winning cartoonist for teenage girls. But I don't like to flash it around too much because mm. when I first started my career in tech, uh, even though I'd been writing PHP and running my own database servers, when I interviewed, all people could see was the artwork. So they were like, this person should be in Photoshop. Because of my art, I ended up getting tricked into a web design career. Uh, personally, I, I just, I hate with the bottom of my heart when people put some, someone in a box. It took many years before I found myself back in front-end development, where I fell in love with CSS. And specifically, when I saw the specification for CSS animations and transitions, and that ended up leading me to speak around the world at conferences and share these nifty little tricks, which all came because I was reading API documentation late one night. It's fascinating to see what people can bring to the table, and that's what I love about open source. What excites you the most about open source? Is it actually the community or some aspects of the community? What are you... Uh, thriving towards? I think what I love about open source is that truly anybody can have the opportunity to build anything that they want. This could be both good and bad. There are parts of open source that are burnout inducing. Uh, a lot of people who maintain third-party libraries that are used by many people around the world, there's this uh, maintainer fatigue that you can run into. Generally, I've I've been a big fan of open source because it was the more it was the the place where I felt like I could do the most, and you know I was able to write useful useful learning materials for people. I was able to go contribute to standards on the W three C as an invited expert. It, it's lovely uh, being able to see your work impact so many people, and just really touches my heart. Especially uh, during the pandem pandemic, some people are staying at home or work at home. I'm glad that you mentioned some conferences uh, that uh, you've been a part of uh, organizing that happened from you know, remotely, basically. And I feel like it actually also opens doors for people who attend and speak at them, being to wherever they are, because I know some conferences uh, in the past where it was in person, uh, there would be you know, issues with traveling, and it wasn't as open. Now it's virtual, while we are apart, I still feel a bit more connected. Yeah. With Women of React Conf, uh, there were attendees. That was like back in 2020. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so wow. far away. The longest year. Uh, there were attendees who were so excited that they were able to come because they, they wanted to come to a React conference the longest time, but, you know, stay at home moms or out in rural countries, not able to, 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 you know, like buy a plane ticket to Silicon Valley to go to a conference, but people were so happy. They were able to tune in for that. It just got such great feedback that when we did react conf in 20, uh, 2021, we went ahead and did the online version again and tried to make it as, uh, you know, we ran it twice once in, uh, the time zones for the West Coast, and then again at time zones for the other side of the world. And I'm glad that you mentioned it was for different time zones because when it's all so much North America centric, you kind of feel left out. And the world is, you know, it's a global place. The global community, React is a global community. So it's ama again, it's amazing to see. It. The we talked about React in the community quite a bit. I I was to me as an uh, you know, outsider to the community really uh, to see the work groups that were created not a while ago for the latest release of react it's been i don't know game changing and i i just love to hear a few words about that 
previously when the React team had an idea or, you know, Sebastian Mark Boge had one, you'd have to like be watching the React repo for some gist or some commentary. And unless you knew where to watch, you might not be aware of the different features that we were thinking about or the different things that might be coming your way. You'd probably only hear about them at a big conference talk. Unfortunately, big conference talks are like a huge promise to the community that something is coming or being worked on. And we're not always ready to have those conversations about new upcoming features. Like we try things out at Meta first, but Meta's use case is not the community's use case. So there's always this period between, well, we've proven it works internally. Now let's see how it works externally. And there was a gap there. React 18 Working Group was this tiny little experimental project that we did. We were able to have conversations directly with the community, with big uh, working group calls. We were able to uh, surface drafts about new features to them and collect feedback. It was a first for us, but it was also a really good idea. I don't know if you've watched the talks at ReactConf uh, 2021, but a lot of working group members were actually able to, you know, join us and speak about the features that they had, uh, they had contributed to. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time and uh, appreciate all your insight. And thank you so much for having me, Dimitri. It's been a real pleasure.